Welcome to another immigration art video. I'm Art Saratelli, and you name it, we do it. Today, let's examine some of the frequently asked questions regarding the marriage case green card. A marriage case is when an individual from another country marries a United States citizen. Usually, the individual from another country is already in the United States, the marriage takes place, and then the couple applies for a green card, lawful permanent residence. Lawful permanent residence and green card, they mean the same thing. The marriage case in the alternative could be processed as an immigrant visa at the United States Embassy in the home country of the non-U.S. citizen spouse. That's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. I'm often asked, do I need a lawyer? Do I need a lawyer to file my marriage case? And the answer is no, you don't. If you have the time and the patience to go through the directions which are scattered all over the immigration website, then have at it. The worst thing that happens is your, your application is incomplete and the government just sends it back. And you redo, you redo whatever they don't like and send it back. But the process of sending it, having it rejected, and sending it back, that whole process could take six weeks, seven weeks. If you don't have that kind of time to make a mistake, then you, you, you should hire an attorney. That's why you hire an attorney. You need an immigration benefit fast that you can get through the green card process, and you don't have the time or the patience uh, to figure out how to do it on your own. You need to have it done once, and you need to have it done right, then secure the services of an attorney. The, the simple rule is if you're in love, are you in love? If you're in love, file a marriage case. If it's a quote marriage of convenience, that's a really nice way to say fraud. It's a fraudulent marriage. No, don't do that. No, 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 no fraud, no good. Some other questions that I'm asked have to do with the timeline of an immigration case based on marriage. Uh, what happens when? How long does it take? So let's look at a typical marriage case. So the first step in the timeline is for the couple to actually get married. Once you're legally married and you have the marriage license, then you can start the marriage case with me, the immigration part of the marriage case. In other words, just getting married isn't good enough. You've got to be married under the laws of the city where you live, and then you also have to file a separate application with immigration to say, hey, immigration, we're married now, and we need a green card for the non-U.S. citizen spouse. Once you collect the data, that we need and give it to our office. We examine it to see if it's complete. If it's complete, great. We start our work. If it's not complete, we ask you for some extra information. You send that in and then we start. And it takes about a week from when we have a complete uh, file of all the information we need. It takes about a week. The forms are prepared. The evidence is matched to the forms. We send it to you. You sign it. And then we file the case with immigration. We file the case with immigration at a central location. Um, in two, three weeks, we'll get receipt notices confirming that the application was re received. And when I, when I say application, it's really four applications. It's an application for sponsorship that's signed by the United States citizen spouse. It's an application by the non-U.S. citizen spouse for the actual green card, and then 
th th there are two other applications. One, it, one, one is for a work card that lets you work legally while you're waiting for the green card. And then the other application, if you're in a lawful status when you apply, you can also ask for travel permission. You could leave the country and return in the right status. The travel permission that you ask for will let you leave America and return as an individual waiting in line for a green card through marriage. You're entering not as a visitor, not as a student, not as a, not as a temporary worker. You're entering as a person waiting in line to get a green card through marriage. After the receipt notices are mailed to our office, we also get, around the same time, an invitation for you to go get your fingerprints taken and a, and a photo, a digital photo. That's called biometrics. So now we're, oh, good golly, now we're a month or six weeks into the process. Three months in, so, so filing, six weeks, you get all your receipt notices and you get your fingerprints taken. Uh, it could be a month, I'm saying six weeks. Uh, th th then, then some more time goes by and we're at the three-month mark. By the three-month mark, you should have your work card and your travel authorization. Then, by month five, maybe six, some places it goes so fast, maybe month four, um, you'll get an interview. You'll be invited to go into the, quote, immigration interview where you prove that you are a normal married couple and you just talk with an immigration officer and answer the questions that they ask. Another question I'm asked a lot is, um, Art, I see on the, in the movies, I see on TV, the marriage case interview is really scary. It looks like it f freaks me out. They put you in a separate room. They ask you, uh, what, what, what did you and your wife have for dinner last night? Where, 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 where do you keep the trash in the kitchen? Uh, they ask you, what color is her toothbrush? Uh, I'm a guy. I don't know what color the toothbrush is. I brush my teeth with it if I can remember to brush my teeth. And they'll ask me things like, what, what color are the towels in the bathroom? I'm a guy. I don't know. I don't know. what. what I, I, here, here's what I don't know. The color of the towels. I'm a guy. I don't notice and I don't really care. It's not on my radar. And here's the answer. If you appear to be a normal couple, they're not going to separate you. They're going to bring you into the interview and you're going to be sworn to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, you sit down in front of a person's desk. The person from the government sits on the other side of a desk. It's not like an interrogation room. It's not a cinder block, empty room with a table and a, a naked light bulb hanging from the ceiling. It is a normal office. There'll be bookcases. There'll be a credenza. There'll be office supplies. There will be sticky notes and there will be stacks and stacks of files. The, the interviewer will have pictures of his family, pictures of his children. It'll be normal. It'll be a nice, pleasant, normal experience. The interview proceeds methodically. After you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, you sit down and then the interviewer essentially goes through the application page by page, line by line, and essentially you sit there and confirm, yes, that's my zip code, yes, that's my phone number, uh-huh, we still live at that address. Once in a while the interviewer may ask Instead of asking you, what's your birthday, they may ask your spouse, spouse, what's her birthday? And then spouse tells them the birthday. Or there, there, there's a biographical data sheet in there with mother's maiden name. And instead of asking you, what's your mother's maiden name, they may ask your husband, husband, what's her mother's maiden name? And husband will tell. And you know what? If husband doesn't know, he'll be honest. Just say, you know what? I don't know. I just know her as my mother-in-law. Her name is Marge. I mean, I know her last name because it's the same name as my, my, my wife's maiden name. But what's, what's Marge's maiden name? I, I'm a guy. I got to tell you. I don't know. If you don't know the answer to a question, just say it. Just say it. You're a normal person in a normal marriage. This is not an interrogation. 
And as they're going through the application, they may ask you things like, hey, how did you meet? What they want to know is that you're both telling the same story as if you both were there. Because in a normal marriage, a real marriage where there is love, you meet somehow through friends, at a bar, at a restaurant, at a church function, at a picnic. You have common friends or you're in a situation where you bump into each other. That is normal. And you answer the question normally. One of the spouses will start answering, and then the other spouse will chime in with some other details. And between the two of you, you will act like a normal couple telling a story. So the interview at USCIS to prove your marriage should not be a big deal. You, you answer the questions they ask you like a natural, normal, married couple. You be your natural selves. And believe me, the immigration folks know it when they see it. They know if someone's really married just by your comportment, by your demeanor, by the natural ebb and flow and give and take of a normal conversation. If you're trying to get away with marriage fraud, they will know. They know when someone seems stiff and they've memorized answers to questions and they look like there's two strangers sitting there on a park bench waiting for a bus and they're reciting memorized answers. But if they ask you simple questions like how did you meet and you answer the questions in a relaxed, fun manner, if you tell a, a, a humorous little story and, and your wife laughs, or if you say something that's a little embarrassing and she punches you in the shoulder, that's a married couple. You just be your natural self. So these interviews are not scary at all, but you've got to also be a little prepared. You have to bring documents to prove that you're in fact married. So the government would like to see that you've commingled your assets and your liabilities. So assets. Do you have a joint bank account? Do you have a um, joint ownership of a house or joint ownership of a car? Is one spouse uh, paying the, the cable TV bill from a joint account? Is the uh, name of the husband and the wife on the electric bill? These things, these kinds of things to prove you're married. And that's really it. That's really it. Turning to the question, do I need a big wedding, a big fancy wedding with six bridesmaids and um, $200,000 catering budget and a gigantic uh, banquet hall at the uh, country club? Do I need that kind of a wedding? No. 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 Here's what you need. A real marriage. You have to have photos, not of a big fancy wedding. You can have been married by the justice of the peace and have taken zero photographs. A fancy wedding is not necessary before the immigration interview. If you want a fancy wedding and you have to do things out of order a little bit, meaning I've, have, I've had a lot of clients who get married at the justice of the peace or at a small little ceremony in, in a, a minister's office. Then they apply for the green card through immigration. They get the green card. And then the non-U.S. citizen spouse uses the green card to go back to his or her home country to be formally married in a church under the eyes of God and family and friends, that person will go home and use the green card to get back. Um, but, but, but the point is you don't need a fancy wedding in the United States. The immigration service is more concerned that you have a real relationship. Have you taken normal, everyday photographs of normal, everyday interaction? Has your husband met your family? Have your friends met your husband? Have his friends met you? Do you have pictures from Christmas, Thanksgiving, last 4th of July? Do you have pictures of you painting uh, the, the walls in your new apartment? Ordinary, everyday photographs prove more about a real relationship than 
posed, wedding photos. Anybody can rent a tuxedo. But nobody is going to be hanging around with some mother-in-law unless it's really their mother-in-law. The government knows a real marriage when they see it. So a photo of you and the mother-in-law, a photo of you playing catch with the dog that you and your wife both uh, share. Um, if you're in love, your photos will show it. Your interaction at the interview will show it. And in the end, the marriage case is all about love, true love.